Douglas Trove Center in Bowling Green, Ohio. We have a Tuesday night Mid-American Conference versus SEC matchup as the Bowling Green Falcons welcome in the number one ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. Is the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, Lexi Fleming. One of the top defenders in the Mid-American Conference really put her skills on display in that game against Iowa when she went for 24 points, seven rebounds, and three steals. And beyond being a great defender, she's an extremely dynamic offensive player. She takes great care of the basketball, very un unselfish, shoots a high percentage from both two and three, and man, can she attack the rim. For her size, it's very impressive what she's able to do offensively, but tonight is going to be a completely different challenge against the trees from South Carolina. Size will, without a doubt, be a factor in this game when you're starting with South Carolina's Camilla Cardoza, six foot seven senior, runs the floor very well, averages a double-double, and one of the top shot blockers in the nation. And you love what Cardoza brings to the table more so than just what she does on the floor. It's what she does in terms of her leadership. She waited her turn behind Aaliyah Boston. You see her now really shining as she steps into the limelight for this South Carolina team. And she's doing great. She's getting other players involved. She has a wonderful job around the hoop, a great rebounder, a great shot blocker, as you said. And as she goes, this South Carolina team goes, but man, are they deep. They can get everybody involved. A great team overall. And that's why they're ranked number one in the country. One of the most familiar faces in women's college basketball, Dawn Staley, 16 season as a head coach. How awesome is it that she comes back here for Coach Jamil to play his Bowling Green Falcons in his first year as a head coach after all the time he put in to the South Carolina program, the Temple program before that, which Coach Saley, as she was telling me, up through the ranks in terms of coaching. You got to love what she's doing with her squad. You got to love what she does for her staff. A real staple of the game, and then you see there Coach Jamil. South Carolina has won 22 consecutive road games. Bowling Green's last time out was a win down at Wright State in front of a great crowd there. Opening possession for the Gamecocks. South Carolina, one of the top scoring teams in the nation, averaging better than 90 points a game. Nice high-low action, easy one down low to get it started for Chloe Kitts. And you see right there the unselfishness from Cardoso. Not only is she a great scorer inside, but a wonderful passer. Great hands, as we said in the open. Sixth woman of the year last year for the nation. Alexi Fleming dealing with that size, tried the reverse. And back comes Pow Pow. Looking inside immediately for Cardozo, the catch and score. That took about five seconds. Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do for six foot seven. That's about two feet away from the block. She found a great spot there. Wonderful pass inside. Easy bucket. Olivia Hill, corner three is good. For Liv Hill, that is a part of her game that she has improved upon throughout her time at Bowling Green. She is now 5 out of 10 from distance this season. And a 3 at the other end, a quick answer from Bree Hall, one of the players you cannot leave open for South Carolina on the perimeter. You absolutely not, cannot, and she's been coming on as of late, especially from 3, but if you're Bowling Green, got to change something up on the defensive end. Way too easy a looks early in this one. To survive at the beginning of this game, and I think defensively, you're going to have to switch it up. Get out of this first quarter. Be in the game. See what you can do. After those two makes, Hill now 9 out of 15 at the charity stripe this season. And a two-point ball game about a minute and a half in. Hall again, opposite corner. She's got a large contingent there behind the South Carolina bench cheering her on. And what a start. Bree Hall is one of the reasons why as Velasco Dawn Staley during her time here at South Carolina is having one of her best three-point shooting teams. They're knocking down about seven threes a game at 40%. Beyond that, she's a heck of a recruiter, Staley, and who would not want to play for one of the legends in the women's game? Pow Pow got a little bit of look for her offense and find her teammates. And off the back rim, rebounded by Cardozo. Underneath. And they can play a lot of players. Everybody can score. And so far, they've been perfect offensively in this game. Bowling Green offensively on the season, averaging... Almost 70 points a game. The Falcons, one of the top scoring teams in the Mid-American Conference. As Kohler hangs, a little bit of contact there, but not enough to draw a whistle. And out and running is South Carolina. Pow Pow looks inside, now goes to Kitts. Kitts goes right to work against Zeke in baseline. Off glass and good, chance at a three-point play. Big time contributor. Young talent on this squad so far has really shown up. Bowling Green so far shooting 40% from the field. Here's Paige Kohler, freshman from Olmstead Falls. She's having a great freshman year, but you think if Bowling Green wants to get into this one, it's going to have to be through Fleming. 
to the corner. Hill hit from there before. This time she's blocked as Kitts got her fingertips on it. South Carolina, the top shot blocking team in the country. And they turn the block into triple. Let's talk about the unselfishness and the dynamic offense that South Carolina has. Still perfect over halfway through this first quarter. Eight for eight from the field. And they absolutely blitzed Presbyterian the other night to a 21-point lead after one. And they look well on their way early in this one. Bowling Green desperately needs an answer on the offensive end and on the defensive end. Three more superstars off their bench that are ready to go. And they just come at you and win. South Carolina's bench averages 36. Here comes Full Wiley. Look inside. Ashlyn Watkins giving it up. Walker, contact. And that's going to be two for Sakima Walker. And Walker, what a great Juco ball at Northwest Florida. She was the Juco player of the year. Not only offensively as a threat, but defensively, they love to get after it. And that is something that Robin Frelick also focused on during her time here as the head coach at Bowling Green. And Fred Shamil wants to continue. Robin Frelick now the head coach at Michigan State. As Erica Porter off that pump fake is fouled. Under the starting lineup. I think if they're going to make any kind of run in this game, it's the size on the season, averaging seven and a half. And sometimes it's just an adjustment in terms of style, getting used to a new coach, figuring out your place on the team, and if coming off the bench works best for Porter and helping this team, that's what you got to do. And Hall's got another. And that very Bowling Green, you're trying to pack the lane right now, but in giving up the three pointers that South Carolina has been perfect on. Pow pow, great pass up ahead to Full Wiley, who will be challenged. Full Wiley actually looked for a foul at the end of that. Morgan Sharps at the end, catch and shoot, got it. Morgan Sharps. Under three minutes to play, first quarter. Right back out to Walker. Just above the free throw line, can't connect. He's a star at Newark High School, just outside of Columbus, Ohio. Made a couple trips to the Final Four. Underneath, Sharps the Porter for the high percentage one. More dynamic and more difficult to defend, especially on the perimeter. And you saw the beneficiary there in Porter. To the corner for Wiley, tries a three, too much on it. Unable to draw iron, and the Bowling Green faithful will let her know about it. Up ahead to Velasco. Bowling Green does not have numbers. Out to Sharps. The catch and shoot. Got it again. It's Fleming's first clean look of the evening. Raven Johnson working around Watkins. Pulls up. Came up short. And time expires here in the first. South Carolina puts up 28 points in the first 10 minutes. The Bowling Green not going away. Falcons down 10. Going to the second quarter. Chloe Kitts off the glass to get things started for South Carolina. Here in quarter number two, Kitts with nine of South Carolina's 30 points. As Bowling Green shooting 41% in that first quarter, having to work for everything, Brandon, but the ball movement has been effective. It has, and really the latter half of that first quarter, BG really started to find something offensively with Sharps. And Sharps had a pretty good look there. Offensive rebound for Clarkley. That is really impressive to get that offensive board between the size of South Carolina. She understands her role, and that's super important when you come off the bench. Morgan Sharps didn't miss it by much. Cross court pass to Hall. Hall drives immediately. Left hand good. Looking for her overall offensive skill to continue to develop as she continues on with Bowling Green. But we like what she does on the glass, and I think right now that's what Bowling Green needs inside. Fleming gets the look. And Lexi Fleming scoreless in this one. One or two defenders running out at her, if not already a hand in her face. And you'd think at some point the first is going to fall, and then Lexi Fleming will really get herself going. Cardozo had great position, and she gets that deep. South Dakota State. She's not the kind of player who's going to drop 40 on you, but, man, she makes the 20 count. Raven Johnson, the steal and scoring knee injury in her freshman season, playing in just two games. Comes back to play in all but one last season and had the best assist-to-turnover ratio by a South Carolina freshman. She's super efficient, very unselfish, plays with a high motor as well. You gotta love that as a coach. 
Morgan Sharps gets her first points inside the arc. Give her eight for the ball game. 16 point game almost midway through the second. Pow Pow wide open in the corner. They were in that 1 3 1 look early in the game and they were giving up corner threes and those high point threes. And you see again South Carolina read the defense well. Used to seeing some zone defenses throughout the year. South Carolina forced a turnover and Lexi Fleming not giving up on the play. Doing without fouling against the must more bigger and physical Pow Pow. Kitts against Hill. Fading away, beautiful touch. 11 points in each of the last two games. She's got 11 in this one after that last bucket. And that was about as old school a move as you'll see there. The nice little touch, fade away one-hander. Sharps finds two more around the paint. Sharps, not just a danger from three, has dished and has drove so far in this one for Bowling Green. Speaking of dangers from three. Have to be aware of Hall at this point has been Perfect from three in this one. Now the takeaway. And all the way for the ball. There's Velasco being guarded by Kitts. Got to get a shot up. Time winding down and thanks. We're going to get a. Right She's had a great start to her career. You no, know, by the way, Zaya Cook played her high school ball at Rogers about 20 minutes from Bowling Green. Now a member of the Los Angeles Sparks playing for head coach Kurt Miller, who we will hear from. At halftime. Lexi Fleming along the baseline. Not only, you know, other Division I colleges, but then moving on to the pro ranks as well. A true spokesman for Bowling Green. Kerr Miller has been the head coach in the WNBA. Gets able to finish over the top of Porta, putting her on the bench and foul. 2022. She's come off the bench in every game, averaging 17 minutes a game. Draining the three, Morgan. She's got a Baker's dozen in this first half. Definitely one of the highlights for Bowling Green has been the offensive play of Sharps. And Brandon, going back to that last three there, she had missed her last few after coming in hot off the bench. We're back to playing as we should be. Set up the screen for Hill. Fleming right wing. We'll get it right back from Zekin. And Hall back on Fleming, and that's been tough for Fleming. And that has been her matchup. Players that are offensively very dynamic, but see three Falcons in the top ten in the Mid-American Conference in free throw. Gotta elevate and get to the right to get around the outstretched hand of Cardoso. You think six foot seven, outstretched hand, probably reaching about seven feet tall. Pow Pow drains the three straight away. Nine points in the first half to go along with five assists and a couple of boards. Kohler will heave from midcourt. 52-31, your score after 20 minutes of play here inside the Stroh Center. Bowling Green trying to hold their own on their home floor. Amy Velasco beat the shot clock off the glass. Bree Hall, she has scored inside and out. Nice finish there with the left hand. And put in the hands of Sharps, one of her. Host for the WNBA draft, and she brought home number one. And you think whoever gets Caitlin Clark is getting... Such a dynamic playmaker and an absolute scoring phenom. And one there from Kitts to Cardoso. And regardless of who hot, who things didn't work out the way she would have hoped. And ends up here at Bowling Green. Worked out very well for Fleming. You saw the flare screen. Great set look by Bowling Green to get their superstar going. And to be clear, for Paige Kohler, things change. Kohler going to use the screen. Out to the corner. Hill gets an open look. Olivia Hill, great ball movement. Make the extra pass. She had a look from the corner, but Hill wide open at the top of the key. Cans it for Bowling Green. Hill is two for three beyond the arc. And any combination that you've gone, low, high, high, low with those two, there's just been no answer for Bowling Green. For Kitts, she now has 13 points just look at this team and you see the talent just the oozing of talent out of their lineup you think who's the next big superstar they have and Kitts might be the one smart cut to the basket layup for Kitts and a now a season high 15 and they're just so unselfish it makes them so difficult to defend Velasco had to get it off quick and banks it in absolutely wonderful prep career as well winning several state titles 
contributing as a seventh grader is just mind-boggling to me. What an opportunity to have, right? Really solid defender. Offensively, her game just continues to grow. Pow Pow gets her hands on it again and this time has the steal. Kitts has deep position. She'll get the catch against Hill, get around her, and score two more. Chloe Kitts touches right now, turns into a bucket. And right now, offensively, she's doing it both inside and out. Morgan Sharps, you give her space, she'll do that. 16 for Sharps, fourth three. I'm going to hit on it again, but the quick release of Sharps has just really made it so she can operate against a very difficult South Carolina defense. It's over to Fleming, shoots it over Cardozo. And Olivia Hill battling for that rebound, hit the deck. Coach Shamil's entire family, and you got to love the reunion, and really you got to love what Coach Saley has done coming here to Bowling Green, playing her former assistant coach's team, bringing this great crowd here tonight to the Stroh Center. It's been a wonderful show. Great for both these squads. You said it earlier. For Wiley, it's been Hall, and she's just had tough sledding all night long. Runner no good for Sharps. Here's Full Wiley the other way. Attacks the basket, gets it to roll. Fleming high arcing three to get it over top of Fagan who was running out at her and the ball ends up in the You can't lose her offensively for Bowling Green. She's been the most consistent answer in this ball game. You just see her confidence continuing to grow. He's in the ball game. Nine out of 22. Velasco left hand got it up. Watkins the board. There's Full Wiley the other way. She's got Fleming in front of her. Got all the way to the basket, couldn't finish it. The follow, and it's going to be an and one. Sonia Fagan stayed with Those it. Those dynamic bigs, great athletes on the perimeter as well to surround them. As we've said, she's had quite the go so far offensively for her team. It looked like a good take there by Watkins. Yeah, she had a good case. Porter underneath, had three, four defenders there. and Had some great moves, a great pivot there to get inside and get some and you'd think if Bowling Green wants to make noise in the MAC later this year, Porter's going to have to play a role in that run. So continuing to see her figure it out here for the Falcons is very important. Mid-American Conference play beginning January 3rd. Left wing three, too much. Watkins comes in, takes it away. Underneath stays with it and has a chance at a three-point play. South Carolina flat out right now is going to get every miss, and Bowling Green not getting a body on. But in doing so, you're giving up a lot of second-chance opportunities, and you're giving up those three-point looks as well, and South Carolina has made you pay. South Carolina trying to keep it out of the hands of Bowling Green's guards as time expires in the third. Brad Nikki alongside Brandon Bosch, thank you for joining us on your Tuesday evening as Bowling Green hosts the number one team in the country, South Carolina. And full Wiley, full speed the other way. Great transition offense. Point guard, she could score from three, was very efficient against Presbyterian from three. 13 player overall in the class. Kohler off the switch, now has full Wiley on her. And full Wiley, the block ends up in the hands of Kitts. I'll tell you more about the night for Chloe Kitts coming up as Raven Johnson, late decision, jumps it off to Cardozo. Velasco's going to try and attack her, or at least thought so for a moment. Might look for a clear out here. Trying to get Porter out of there. Velasco will attack and is blocked from behind by Cardozo. Pretty impressive. She was limping on one leg and still able to pull off the block. That's a good job by Fleming just to stay in front and Porter gets the jump ball. This is Pow Pow, the Oregon transfer with it. She was all Pac-12 honors all three seasons at Oregon. She and was just blossoming before our eyes. See if South Carolina can take advantage of the Bowling Green turnover. Pow Pow, right wing three, smiles. The South Carolina squad does a little bit of everything. Pow Pow the rebound. Full Wiley thought about the pull up, takes a dribble, can't knock it down. Bowling Green wants to push the pace. Velasco sees Fleming all alone up ahead. What, what? For the sophomore now, and that high low combination between her and Cardoso is going to be an absolute menace in the Southeastern Conference this year. 
South Carolina on the season shooting 52% from the field, 60% tonight. Shot 64% in the first half. Not talk about it, but I think if you're Bowling Green, you've got a lot of positives to look at when you leave this game. You've really done well on the glass for the most part. Porter has played excellent throughout the game. And Porter went right. How they're going to operate moving forward, and I think this is another piece in the puzzle of their season. But you're playing a couple of Big Ten teams and the top team in the country. You look at their schedule, they're out of conference. They don't back down from anybody either, and you see that in their coaching pedigree. Obviously, they have a similar philosophy. Well, did not attempt a free throw in the first half, but she is an improved free throw shooter. Yeah, given how much South Carolina lost to be where they are right now, Don Staley's got to be pretty content. Johnson baseline catch and shoot. Just a jump. It's nice when you can bring a McDonald's All-American off your bench as your 10th or 11th man. Woman, sorry. And she will continue to be one of those players that I think, like Full Wiley, will have a bigger role as she continues on. Morgan Sharps, 22 points on the night. Sharps has got to feel great after this game against the top team in the country. She's really put on a show. Into Hill. Keeps it out of the hands of Watkins. Eight on the shot clock for Velasco. Corner for Sharps. Can she stay hot? Yes. She had 26 against Southern Indiana. Off the miss for Walker. Here come the Falcons. Just over three to play. And Sharps finds Porter. Got Watkins on her back. The pump fake and the reverse finish. Nice moves. Though they're down 30-plus, they continue to play with great heart and effort. Steal by Fleming. Fleming's going to leave it. It's Velasco getting the look. And Fleming hustles down the loose basketball. Former Bowling Green Falcon Nyla Hampton, now part of that Ball State program, will be facing her former teammates. That's a big-time matchup, and you'd think both teams know that that's one of the key games in the map this year. Getting all the way to the right. Displaying her frustration in a variety of ways. Reminder to stay with us when this one goes final. We'll show you the final stats. There, she's holding her players accountable. Even late in a game like this where they're up 30 points, does she take your talent and elevate it, but she's going to hold you accountable and make you better. Kohler. Knocked away for a moment. Finds McGuff in the lane. She is blocked. Zekin's got it. Earned a starting role as of late. Made her first career start last game. Now playing in her 81st career game for Bowling Green. And in that last game for Zekin, she did have 12 points and 10 boards. First career double-double. Second free throw good. The final seconds will tick down here in Bowling Green. A great effort from Bowling Green. But South Carolina shows why they are number one in the country. 93-62 the final. The Gamecocks are now 11-0. Bowling Green, quick turnaround now. You get ready Friday to go to Blooming to take on the Indiana Hoosiers, number 15 in the country. And another big-time opponent. And We talked about you know this team as a whole challenging themselves throughout the month of December. It's only going to pay off. Come back play. Again, you've got a lot of positives to take out of this one against the number one team in the country. And Fred Shamil, some nice moments there with familiar faces. His former team coming here to the Stroh Center tonight. No matter the outcome of this game, this game benefits both sides. It does, and you see a lot of players there that are very excited to see Coach. And probably a lot of kids he recruited to South Carolina, you would think. They're happy for him, happy for his opportunity here at Bowling Green. He's had quite the start to his coaching career here in Bowling Green. Got to be excited for the future. Again, a solid effort from the Falcons tonight.